uh, pseudo-holomorphic curves and ended with a little bit more abstraction. Um, today I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'll begin with some um, more abstract discussion and then, and then you know, eventually we'll find our ways back to pseudo-holomorphic curves. Okay, so, uh, so, so last, uh, where, where did we leave off? So um, we, were, we were talking about a category C and we're, we were talking about um, uh, the category of, of functors, the category of sets. Um, and, an, and an object of this functor category is called a presheaf. A functor from C off the set is called a presheaf. So this is a category of presheaves on, on C. And, and one of these presheaves is called uh, representable. When it's isomorphic to one of these presheaves HX, which is just HOM in C to an object X. So some X. Okay, and, and, and furthermore, um, we argued that. Um, pair x in C and u in f of x representing f unique up to unique isomorphism. So if I want to specify for you an object of C, I might as well specify the, the associated presheaf. Great. So, 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 so we had some um, um, examples such as the space of continuous maps, uh, the compact open topology. This represents um, functor. Represents this functor, um, and. Uh, this CW complex BO represents the map to isomorphism classes of vector bundles. And this is uh, the first one, I guess, is on, a topologi on this category of topological spaces. The second one is on the, in the homotopy category of CW complex. Oh, okay, so that's a that's a quick review of where we left off last time. So, um, turns out there's there's a there's an, not only um, can you talk about um, these these representable presheaves as as individual objects. There's there's a uh, entire functor from C to Presheaves on C, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm now I'm gonna call it presheaves yeah, pre on C. So that's this category sending X to HX. And there's a fundamental fact about this. This, this functor, which um, which is that natural bijection between um, on the presheaves from H of X to any F and the value of that presheaf on the object. Um, and I'm going to pose an exercise to 
prove it. Um, it's, it's completely trivial, it's like two lines or something, but yet um, it's a little bit tricky to figure it out. So, um, it looks, it, it's, it's uh, yeah, it, it's tricky to figure out where, where the content actually is and whether you've proven it or whether you've just written down the tautology. Okay. So in, in, in particular, um, um, if I take f um, to be itself a unit defunctor, um, be the hom from hx to hy is equal to hom from x um, to y. In other words, this functor y Fully faithful. Fully faithful meaning it's a the bijection on, on morphisms. Okay, so so what that means is that we can view C as as a full subcategory of, of precies of C. This is a and and, and this is a, a much stronger assertion than this. Um, assertion here about the, uh, representing a functor, um, or the object representing a functor being unique up to unique isomorphism. Um, so you can you can think of P of C as consisting of sort of generalized objects of C in the sort of very vague sense, uh, but the sense which is similar to the way in which distributions are generalized functions. Right? A distribution is something which, well, you can't evaluate it at a point, but you can integrate it against any smooth function. You can sort of pair it with smooth functions. And a pre-sheaf is exactly the same sort of thing. You can't, um, it's not an object of C, but um, you can at least make sense of this mapping an object of C to it. In, in this sense. Um, okay, so just uh, mark there's a there's a precise version of this statement that C is the free co completion. Of C. Yes. I was Okay, so I think we're done with that. Question. Yes. Yeah. So the question is why? Why does? Uh, why, why? Why is this implication true? Um, yeah. So I'm just going to take f equal to h y. Um, so f is hy, and hy on x um, I'm from x to y. Now, I didn't tell you what the map was. And so you might complain that um, this, this equality might not be the, 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 the map induced by the functor, but, but, but it is. You, you can check that. Okay, so there's a more geometric um, subcategory of, of, of the category of all sheaves. And that is something which doesn't make sense on all categories. It only makes sense on some categories with the topology. And I'm going to stick to the case of topological spaces or smooth manifolds here. So then, I'm basically, I need a notion of open covering, which, 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 have, which both of these categories have. So,
F. The sheaf when draw open covers X is of open sets. Um, the following say bijection. X goes to limit let me not write it like that. Let me not write it like that at all. The set of tuples alpha i in f of ui such that when you, you take their image in F of any overlap, they coincide. So this, what it says intuitively, is that the specifying element of f of x amounts to local data. Example. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, so let's, um, yeah, that was many questions, so let, let, let me just uh, go over the definition again, clarifying all of that. Okay, so, so we're, um, we're only considering these two categories okay, for, for, for right now. So X is an object of one of these categories. And an open, every open subset of X is therefore also an object in the category. Right, open subset of a smooth manifold is a smooth manifold. Um, so I can apply F, F to that uh, open set. And if I start with an, an, uh, an element of F of X, so there's a tautological inclusion map, right, from UI to X, just including that open set. Um, and so that gives me a map, a restriction map from F of X to F of UI. So if I have an element of F of X, um, I can get a bunch of elements of, of F of UI, one for every I. Now if I have two open sets, f of x maps to ui and to uj, um, because they're open subsets. And then both of these also map to ui intersect uj. Okay, and the, the, the fact that f is a functor means that this diagram commutes. This is the, this, the same map, just it's the map induced by pulling back under the inclusion from ui intersect uj into x. So if I start with an element of f of x and I, I look at the tuple of elements of f of ui I get for all i, then I can't just get any tuple. The only tuples I can possibly get are the ones that satisfy this condition, 
that when I take alpha i and further restrict it to the intersection, that's the same as taking alpha j and further restricting it to the, to the intersection. And then I, I made this sort of imprecise statement that, that the, the assertion that this map is an isomorphism should be thought of as saying that, um, well, it's to specify an element of f of x amounts to, to local data on x. Um, and what do we mean, what do you mean by local? Well, well I mean, you, could, you can specify it on some open sets, and, and if, if you have agreement on overlaps, then, then it, exists, it extends to your, your whole space. But I think maybe, um, maybe at this point an example would be clarifying. Yes, question. Yeah, yeah, well, um, yes, you, so, okay, so, repeat the question. The question was, um, the definition of a sheaf that you, you often first see is a sheaf on a fixed topological space. And um, if you took this definition and re replaced C with the category of open subsets of a fixed topological space, um, then you would recover that definition. Um, so this is, this is a, anyway. It, it's, it's a very similar flavor. It's, it's, a, it's a different thing. Um, you know, it's, it's the one you want to use if you're, if you're talking about sort of representing functors. Okay, so, so, so let me write down an example. An example is that these unitive functors are sheaves. Why is that? Um, well, if I suppose I have some smooth manifold M, and I want to map X to M. Well, specifying a smooth map from X to M is the same as specifying a smooth map on each UI to M, and with, with the requirement that they agree on overlaps. There's not, there's not much content in that statement. OK. Um, but there are other things which are sheaves. For example, um, A and B are smooth manifolds. Um, then Z maps to smooth maps. Um, Z cross A to B. That's also a sheaf. And it's basically the same reason, because um, you know, now the sheaf property is telling me that to specify a smooth map from Z cross A to B, I can just specify on UI cross A, and, and it should agree on the overlaps. Okay, so that one is also a sheaf. Usually the statement, usually the assertion that something is a sheaf is sort of a trivial statement. It's, it's, it's either, um, if, it's, if it's true, the, the proof doesn't amount to much. Um, but we, we, we remarked last time, this one is not representable. Okay, so there are more sheaves than representables. Um, what is something that's not a sheaf? Uh, not sheaves. Um, U maps to the set of embeddings of U into Rn. So to specify a map from U to Rn, that is a local data. But the condition that that map be an embedding is not a local condition. So this map uh, would be an, an injection, but not a surjection. U maps to a set of continuous functions on U cross U. Okay, so that's, that's not a sheaf, because it's not local data. If I have a point you know, p comma q, and p is different from q, then, then that's, um, anyway, if, 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 if this is u, and this is u, and this is the diagonal of u, and I try to sort of 
make an open cover of U and look at continuous function on UI cross UI, that's only going to give me functions over, over some of these boxes. It's, it's never going to tell me what, what it does anywhere else. Um, here's something which is also not a sheaf. U maps to isomorphism classes of vector bundles on U. So uh, that's a little bit maybe surprising at first glance that that's not a sheaf because, well, I, I had this intuitive motto that a sheaf is something which um, uh, is local. And to specify a vector bundle, that's, that's something pretty local. You can glue vector bundles together if I give you an open cover and vector bundles on each open set, and, and, and you specify isomorphism between them and co-cycle condition. You can glue them together to get a global vector bundle. OK, so, so, so the problem is your isomorphism classes. Um, OK, so wh wh why is this not a sheaf? Well, I mean, here, here's, here's an explicit counterexample, right? Take a, take a circle and cover it with this open set. And this open set, and let's look at vector bundles of rank one. So the intersection is um, this union, that. Um, there's only one vector bundle on this piece, only one vector bundle on this piece, and only one vector bundle on, on their intersection. And yet the vector bundle, there are two vector bundles on the circle, right? rank one vector bundles on the circle. Um, it depends on how I glue them together. And that's not something that this definition captures. OK, uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going a little bit out of order from my notes, but I think it makes sense. So. Um, So to fix this last example, we need the notion of a stack. And, and that following. So, so first, let's define a groupoid. Um, this is a category. All morphisms are isomorphisms. So, you know, if you take any category and just throw away all the morphisms which aren't isomorphisms, you get a groupoid. So, uh, take your favorite category. Um, it gives you an example of a groupoid by just throwing away all the all the non-invertible morphisms, groups and isomorphisms of groups. And, okay. um, so, for, 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 for example, if G, if G is any group, we can look at this um, uh, BG. This is a groupoid. It's, it's just a single object, and the, and the you know, set of automorphisms of that object is, is G. That's an example of a groupoid. Um, another example is um, X is a topological space, um, then vector bundles of X and isomorphisms of vector bundles over X is a groupoid. So um, functor F from not values in sets, but in the Instead, valued in the category of groupoids of the stack when um, for all open covers the 
following is an isomorphism. Um, so, sorry, x equals yes, thank you. Okay, so again, I'm only taking C to C here to be as, as smooth manifolds or sets, or smooth manifolds or topological spaces. Right. Um, so here, um, I'm just going to write down um, an analog of the of the sheaf condition, but it will be a little bit different. So, so again, I I choose alpha i in f of ui for all i. Okay, and then there's this agreement on overlaps condition. But um, if you're in a category, like the category of vector spaces, it's usually a bad idea to talk about equality or isomorphism of objects. It's better to specify an isomorphism. Yes? Yes. The question is, what is groupoids? Groupoids is a two category. I was, I was, I was, I was hoping not to have to say this. <laughs> so this is a two category. It's not a category. Um, and <clears throat> so, in, anyway, in a, in a, in a category, the collection of morphisms from x to y is a set. And in a two category, the collection of morphisms from, from x to y is a groupoid. And that means you have to be a little bit more careful about what you mean by associativity of composition. But maybe I'll leave it at that. Okay, the question is to repeat. So uh, in, in, in a category, uh, hom xy is a set. In a two category, hom um, xy is a groupoid. One of these things. Um, and uh, replacing it with a set of isomorphism classes is usually not what you want to do. When it's a groupoid, you have to be a little bit careful about what you mean by associativity of composition, because hom xy times hom yz times hom zw to hom xw, that is a functor between groupoids. And so you can't, can no, you, it, is, it is the wrong condition to say that the two functors you obtain by composing in either order um, are isomorphic. You need to specify an isomorphism and then require a co-cycle condition for, for, for quadruples of morphisms. Anyway, this, despite the extra complication, most of the things you want to ever consider with, group, with, with, with categories, you can just do with two categories. And it, it works mostly the same. There are a few more diagrams to, to chase, but that's it. OK. so. Maybe I'll continue writing the definition. Um, you take alpha i um, in f of ui. You can restrict alpha i and alpha j to ui intersect uj. And um, we no longer want to say that they're isomorphic. We, we, they're the same since, since they're objects of the category. We should specify an isomorphism between them. So, so that's part of the data here, beta ij. That's uh, from alpha i restricted to ui intersect uj to alpha j restricted to ui intersect uj. And um, well, how do we glue together vector bundles? If I have an open cover, x equals union i ui, and I have vector bundles on each of the ui, and on each double overlap, I have an isomorphism between their restrictions. Um, if I want to get a vector bundle on the total space, I'm missing a condition, namely the co-cycle condition. 
So I better have the uh, beta ij times beta jk. Um, I'm going to swap the order of these so my composition is in the, in the correct order, I think. Alpha j, alpha i. Uh, so then I can write this co-cycle condition in an order which makes sense. Beta ij, beta jk is equal to beta ik. So this thing on the right here is a groupoid. Let me not tell you the, the definition of, well, let me not write the definition of a, an isomorphism between two of these things, but there's a natural way to talk about things here being isomorphic. So I've basically talked through uh, the example that uh, x maps to vector bundles on x. The stack. So I don't think I need to say more about that. Um, but ba basically, anything you could want to parameterize um, is going to give you a stack. So, um, you know, x maps to um, say x is, is a smooth manifold, then we do things in the smooth category. Then I can ask to parameterize Riemann surfaces by smooth manifold. So what does that mean? Um, C goes to x. Um, um, well, it's a, I guess it's a submer maybe it's a proper submersion. Um, with a fiberwise almost complex structure. Proper submersion um, with uh, fibers, with two dimensional fibers. The fiberwise almost complex structure. So that, this is the, you know, the, this, this you would call the moduli stack. of Riemann surfaces. Okay, so the question, you, you, you should be the first question um, you ask is, you know, is it representable? Right, if, if it were representable, then that object representing it, I would call it the moduli space of, of Riemann surfaces. So, so what's the answer to this question? Yes, Paul. If the answer were yes, then it would probably be pretty hard to construct it. So, Um, so, <clears throat> everything representable is of the form hom to something, and hom to something is always a set, and, and this is not a set because it has automorphisms. That's the... I, 
right? I'll, I'll expand on that. It could be equivalent to, it could be equivalent to, it's not equivalent to a set, is my. Uh, no, as long as you, as soon as you have any automorphism, it's, it's not equivalent to a set. Okay. <laughs> it's not equivalent to a set, indeed. It's not, yes, okay. Yes, I, I, should, indeed, I, should, I should write it, I should say it like that. No. Uh, because it's, say, it's value on a point is not equivalent to a set. Where are the morphisms of the groupoid on the left-hand side? The left-hand side of what? F of x? Or this, this, maybe this groupoid here? So, okay, I'll, uh, sorry? Yes, that's one. Okay. So, okay, so, so, so yeah, so, 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 yeah, I, I think it must be about this. Okay, so, so a morphism, a morphism, I, Um, is a diagram. And it's an isomorphism over X. So, so C to X is some family, and C prime to X is another family, and I, I give this map. And this map should be an isomorphism, not just any map. Well, it's isomorphism of families over X's. Uh, yes. Um, so equivalent means, uh, what do I mean by equivalent to a set? Um, right, so when you have, um, so if you have two categories, you can ask for functor um, in both directions, and for both compositions to be isomorphic to the identity. That's an equivalence of categories. It's called equivalence, not isomorphism. Um, because, um, because you don't want to ask that both compositions are equal to the identity functor, just that they're um, equivalent to it, or isomorphic to it. Um, so a, a set, you can regard it as a groupoid by saying, well, the objects are that set, and there are no morphisms other than the identities of every, of every element. Yes, I, uh, why is it not equivalent to a set? Yes, so I'll, I'll finish my sentence. It's not equivalent to a set since um, there exists uh, there exists Riemann surface. C. whose automorphism group is not one. And as soon as you have an object of your groupoid, automorphism, well, it's even if and only if, right? A groupoid is equivalent to a set if and only if the automorphism group of every object is trivial. Indeed, yes, the stack of vector bundles is not representable either. Okay, so, so despite the fact that these are not representable, Um, well, how can I say, they, they, they are still, uh, nicer than arbitrary stacks. Well, they're also nicer than arbitrary stacks, but they're even nicer than arbitrary appreciates, I guess. Okay, so 
let, let, me, let me refer back to my notes rather than just uh, making it up as I go. <clears throat> so in, in, in particular, um, for example, moduli stack of orbital of moduli stack of, of, of Riemann surfaces. And here, uh, just so I don't say a technically wrong statement, let's say the genus is at least two, um, is an orbifold. So that's probably the, the tamest you can the, the the tamest you can be without being actually representable by a smooth manifold. So it's it's, a, it's the quotient of a smooth manifold by a, a just locally the quotient of a smooth manifold by a finite group action. Okay, so 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 let me say what what uh, what that what that means. Okay, so if you have a stack on topological spaces, um, X and Y are stacks on topological spaces. Map Y. Called representable when we're all in top uh, fiber product x cross y z representable. Okay, so we already have a notion of when an object is representable. I'm defining what it means for, for a morphism to be representable. And what you should think of this as saying is basically that the fibers are representable. The fibers of the morphism are representable, whatever, whatever that means. Um, yeah, so an orbifold is not a manifold, right? So, so Holmes to an orbifold is, um, but the question is, how can the moduli stack be, be an orbifold? Um, well, I haven't really defined for you an orbifold. So, <laughs> so, uh, so orbifolds do not form a category. They form a two category. They're one of these. Um, and, and what that means is that the maps, um, yeah, an orbifold doesn't have a set of points. It has a, has a, has a groupoid of points. Anytime you have a, a local model, you know, Rn mod G, and you have a point um, in Rn, uh, you should regard the, you know, the point in the quotient as having automorphism group the, the stabilizer at that point. Why? For, for every, yes, so in indeed, I messed this up. Uh, for, every, uh, for every in top and every map, D to Y. Yes, yes, a, a map from Z to Y is, is a map from the unitive functor of, of Z 
to, to y. Equivalently, it's an object of the groupoid y of z. Okay, so, so, so more, more, more generally, um, if p any property of morphisms served under pullback So, property of morphism served under pullback is a property <coughs> of morphisms <coughs> such that um, in any diagram like this, if x to y has p, then, then so does the pullback. So there are lots of properties like this, ones which uh, an open map of topological spaces, an embedding of topological spaces, um, a closed embedding of topological spaces, um, admitting local sections, um, a submersion of, of, of smooth manifolds. Um, there, there, there are lots of these. Um, so then you, 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 can, um, you can say what it means for a map of stacks to have this property, meaning all pullbacks have it. Have it. And maybe I'll just a definition. Orbifold um, stack on category of smooth manifolds um, stack X. that one um, exists a surjective at all map u to x u and two the diagonal map proper. So in the presence of two, one is equivalent to one prime, which says that x is locally m modulo gamma for m with manifold and gamma finite group. So in some sense, this, this stack of, of vector bundles is um, a unit point modulo DLNR. So this is a quotient in, in this category of stacks. Yeah, um, what do I mean by locally? Um, so <clears throat> there are lots of, right, so I mean um, there are a bunch of open embeddings from M mod gamma to X, and it's an open covering. And open embedding and open covering, those are properties of morphisms in category of um, topological spaces or smooth manifolds, and so they make sense for morphisms of stacks also. So I can talk about a map of stacks being an open embedding or 
bunch of maps, a bunch of a collection of open embeddings being open cover. There exists. What, what was the meaning of one? What is, so th th there exists a surge activated null map from, from, from some, from some UN, from some smooth manifold U. So ital means uh, local isomorphism. Local homeomorphism or local um, diffeomorphism. Okay, so there were a few, quite a few more things I wanted to say, but um, yes, yes. One is easier because, sorry. <laughs> the question was that one prime seems easier than one um, because showing something is locally a quotient uh, requires actually, well, okay. okay. I, I, I'm just gonna assert the opposite, which is that one, one, one is easier than one prime because um, Right, if X is union of MI modulo gamma I, then M I to MI modulo gamma I is et al. And this is a bunch of open embeddings. In particular, it's a tall. So this is a tall. Oh yeah, it all, no, it all, it all does not mean proper. Certainly not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going from one to one prime is a little bit harder. But so actually, let me stay the theorem along. This is a in the last ten years um, theorem of Zung, which says that if X back on smooth manifolds and it has proper diagonal and um, there exists a surjective submersion U you represent with X, then an X locally M mod G for smooth manifold and G compactly group. Condition two. Yeah, so condition, what would happen if we dropped condition two? So condition two is analogous to uh, being Hausdorff. 
So um, you, you can get lots of um, sort of very, very bad things, like um, you could take the, like the real line with a doubled origin, and then maybe you could uh, sort of try to quotient by the, by the Z2 action exchanging the two origins or something like that. Um, so if you, have, if, you, if you drop two, then one and one prime are no longer equivalent. No, one is weaker. Basically, you take any, um, any, any, any smooth manifold and take uh, open sets and identify them by some, however you like. Uh, yes, yeah, so so we had this, yeah, so I think, I think maybe I didn't say this. So C um, embeds into, um, let me, let's just write, let's be a little more simple. So C, The embeds fully faithfully into the category of, of stacks. So, um, that means there's really no need to distinguish between um, an element of C and its, its geonative functor here. So, this is just, if, if we're thinking about stacks, then we're working in this category. And if I ever mention an object of C, I really mean its image in here. Not that those things are, were really any different in the first place, but um, so, so if I, I mean a map from, so, so if F the stack, then, um, then a map X to F means a map from HX um, to F. And by Yoneda, That's, that's the same thing as L object of f of x. So I apologize that this lecture was all about stacks. I thought I was going to get to holomorphic curves. I, I promise I will do only holomorphic curves next time. I didn't. I didn't really hear the last part. Something about image of, image of a. Uh, okay. So, so, so the, the the question was to compare the definition of a sheaf with the definition of a stack. Yeah. So. Um, when is a stack a sheaf? That was that was the question. Yes. Okay. So. Um, okay. So sets. You should think of as inside. And there's there's this thing you can you can sort of there's a, a, a reflection maybe call reflection just um, take isomorphism classes go from group voice to sets okay um, so this inclusion is is very nice uh, sets into group voice and so any sheaf is a stack um, now you can t take a stack and and apply pi zero to it to get a pre sheaf and usually it's not a sheaf. Um, I don't know if I could, I mean, if, if it were originally a sheaf, it came from a sheaf, but, but if, if it's not a sheaf, then probably, but if it's not, yeah, if, it, yeah if, if you have a stack which is not a sheaf and you try to apply isomorphism classes, usually you're not gonna get a 
a sheaf. Yes, I mean, and vector, I mean, and, and yes, yeah, vector bundle remount surface, any of the examples. I don't, I mean, if it were a really trivial stack, I guess you could probably, but I don't know. Yeah, so the question was, um, at the beginning of this time and the end of last time, I talked about isomorphism classes of vector bundles that as a functor on the homotopy category of, of CW complex. And I said that's represented by BL. And then today, I, later, I said, well, as vector bundles, that's isomorphism classes. Um, that's not representable as a functor on top. Um, yeah, so so... So there's no inconsistency since these are different categories. And you, you, know, you, you, you can try to you know, take the functor from, say, nice topological spaces to the homotopy category of CW complex and try to prove one is representable based on noting, noting the other is, you'll realize you can't prove it. And, and, and by doing so, maybe you'll see why. Yes. Yeah, so, so what do I mean by proper and surjective submersion? So these are, again, pr uh, properties which are preserved under pullback. And so I can, um, I can, I can define them for a map of stacks by, by saying, well, every pullback satisfies them. Yeah. Ah, yes, what do I mean by P of C is the free co-completion of C? So let's see if I get this right. Um, so, so let's say D is a co-complete co category. And that means it has all co-limits. So then I can look at co-continuous functors from P of C. D, co-continuous means preserves all co-limits. And I can restrict it to C. And this is an equivalence. That's what it means that P of C is a free co-completion. 